Hello guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey, it's your boy Max, I'm the host of the channel and today's video is going to be a very exciting one for you guys. A big thank you to my patrons and the topic for today's video is going to be predicting a 33 man squad for the 2023 World Cup for the South African Springboks. The Springboks are currently the reigning champions having won the Webb Ellis Cup in 2019 even after two years of the Alistair Kotzea era. Razzy Erasmus came in, transformed the team and everyone knows the story from there. They somehow went from a bit of an average win percentage to World Cup champions. Today I'm going to kind of predict who I think will be in the squad and I'm going to give a reasons for um, new additions to this team. I'm going to um, just kind of make this with um, kind of the idea at the back of my head that these guys are all going to be injury free as well. As we all know, rugby players tend to get injured. The uh, hookers I think South Africa will field for 2023, provided Jacques Nenaba is still the head coach. Um, the first choice hooker I think will still be Bongi Mbanambi. Yes, he's still in his 30s. I do think though the powerful ball running hooker still has a lot to offer the team through his experience though. Type 5 forwards don't seem to retire as early as the backs do, so I think it's safe to say we could see Mbanambi stick around considering he's played a huge portion of the minutes at the number 2 jersey and it is a position in the team's spine. Malcolm Marks I also think is going to stick around. A lot of people rate Marks as a better player than Mbanambi. I kind of um, don't really think he reached his potential but I think he is still indeed a very very good player. I think we will see Marks remain as well. He could even make it to 2027. 20, I think the third choice hooker is probably going to be Joseph Dweeber. It took him a wee while to get some minutes going under Ninaba's first few tests, but he started to kind of get integrated more and more into the team, so I think it's quite safe to say he'll fight off the likes of Aka van der Merwe and Skara into Benny, who are getting a bit too old, and he's going to remain the third choice hooker for the Springboks. We might even see him start a few tests against Wales in the mid year series to kind of get his confidence going up. The props, it's quite obvious. We are going to see Steven Kitts off. He is going to reach 100 tests if he avoids injury. <laughs> um, I also think Ox Enche will remain around. The guy isn't even 6 feet tall, but he's a very, very heavy and muscular guy. He's pretty much impossible to move at scrum time, as is Kitts off. Um, Trevor Inyakani, I think, will go as the third loose head prop for the sake of his versatility. We may even see him in jersey number 18, during the tournament. Um, controversial, I know Franz Malherber rather I think will stay. Some people think he is um, a bit too heavy for a professional athlete but hey, I think he's going to remain. Thomas Dutoy I think will stay on board as well. Thomas Dutoy is very promising. Another very promising guy I've got here is uncapped. His name is Corbus Elof. Um, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. He plays for the Melbourne Rebels right now. Yep try scoring machine. Even though he plays for an Australian team, I think it could well be a possibility that he gets a cap for the Springboks. He's so good at the scrum as well, I think he's got a lot of potential. We're moving over to the locks, I think we will just see four locks in the team because the Springboks tends to pick loose forwards who can also play at lock. Ebenezer Beth is an obvious one if he's going to be fit, as is Lou Diaga because he's also become quite an experienced player. Ebenezer Beth should ideally have over 100 tests by this point. It will be a crime if he does not become South Africa's most capped ever player. I think Franco Mostert will stick around and possibly retire at the end of the 2023 Rugby World Cup. Franco Mostert will be 33 in that uh, tournament, so I think he'll probably want to win a second World Cup for his swan song. I think uh, JJ Van der Mescht, 
hope I'm saying his name right again, Aitam Makiwi. Um, he's got a lot of potential as well, a very, very tall guy. He's so dynamic, but he's also heavy, and the South Africans like to have locks with a lot of power. I do think Peter Steph Dutoy will eventually return from injury to play a test match again as well. And um, a guy called Elrig, I think his name is Lo, is a very similar player to Peter Steph Dutoy. Did a bit of research on the uh, up and coming loose forwards for South Africa, and um, I think this guy has a lot of potential. He's big, he's strong, and um, he would really be um, a good like for like replacement of Dutoy, hence why I'm going to omit Quagga Smith. Sia Khaleesi is almost guaranteed to be the captain once again as he lifted the trophy in 2019. And I think uh, Marco van Staden's a much harder runner than Smith, whereas he offers a bit more physicality at the breakdown. I think Marco van Staden's going to be in Juicy 20. We'll also probably see Jasper Visa in the number 8 Juicy. It's just a bridge too far for Dwayne Vermeule and he's going to be 37 and um, I think he's looking like he's probably ready to retire sometime soon. I think um, the retirement of Vermeule and pushing um, Visa into the 8 Juicy will see the first cap of Evan Roos. Um, a few people are a bit angry he hasn't got a cap yet so I think he might finally get his justice. Now, with the halfbacks, a bit of controversy again, Faf de Klerk will probably keep starting. Corbus Reinach, I think, is probably the closest player to de Klerk you're going to get in terms of tactical kicking, while I love the impact the guy brings with his running game. Inherited so, so much pace from his father. And uh, I do think, though, Jaden Hendricks will probably replace Herschel Yanchis. Yanchis just, um... Hasn't really been given a lot of faith by the coaches when de Klerk's been out and they've tended to be starting Reinach whenever this has been the case. So I do think that indeed, um, yes, Jaden Hendricks will come in. Hendricks is a bit younger, so he's got a bit more time to become a world-class player, whereas Yanchez should ideally be in the height of his career right now. The first fives, they're probably just going to take two. It's quite obviously going to be Andre Pollard if he remains fit. Not only is he a brilliant tactical kicker that's so, so fit and powerful, but the guy uh, passes like a bullet. Um, Elton Yanchis is probably going to stay on board as well. Um, I would not get rid of him, but to be totally honest, I can't really see much changing with Elton Yanchis, um, whereas Herschel Yanchis hasn't really got quite the amount of experience as his namesake who he's not related to. Into the midfield, guys, you're kidding me, right? If you're commenting someone in Lucanio Arm or Damien Dialendi, I don't think you really understand how important those two are to the game plan because they have quite small outside backs and uh, Pollard mostly sits in the pocket for them right now as their tactic stands. So having big midfielders to be makeshifts forwards is quite important to them. For that reason, I do think we are going to see Jesse Creel get dropped for the return of Andre Esterhazen. I've seen a lot of people say he's a bit too one-dimensional, but bruh, he's got a cap before, he's very strong, he's got a good kicking game, and his passing, yeah, pretty good. I do want Andre Esterhazen's return to the Bok jersey because, dude, he is so, so damaging, and he can defend as well. Um, another um, very versatile center I think we'll um, see get a debut is Wandasili Similani, I hope I'm saying his name right again, I am a Kiwi, forgive me. Um, he's pretty much a like-for-like -like replacement of um, Jesse Creel, except he's 24 years old, so he could probably end up having quite a long career. The pace on this man's nuts, and uh, he's also pretty agile, so that's quite handy to have. Over to the outside backs, Cheslin Colby's pretty much guaranteed to be in the 14 jersey. He'll probably start to get a bit slower after 2023, though, as he is approaching 30. Um, Marcus Oli Mapimpi though, I don't think he's going to be there. Um, look, he, he started his professional career quite late in comparison to others because he grew up from an absolutely tragic background and he overcame so many obstacles to become a springbok. Um, I do think though age will catch up with him before the World Cup. We'll probably see him get 30 tries and then 
kind of dip out of form. A good like-for-like -like replacement for Marcazzoli Mapimpi is Mark Talia of the Blues. He was born to a Samoan mother and a South African father, and he speaks Samoan fluently. He first went to Africa in 2020 to play against South African Super Rugby teams. Sadly, they're no longer in Super Rugby. And Talia is a very, very similar player to Mapimpi, and I think that um, his aerial ability would help them out tactically wise and uh, he eats meters just like how Mapimbi does. A very classy player, and yes, he is eligible for South Africa through his father, I believe. Check him out if you haven't heard of him. Um, the uh, number 11, 14 replacements, kind of that wing cover, I don't think it's going to be Spoo Nkosi. Um, his attacking isn't quite there in comparison to Colby's, and we saw him get exposed a few times by the All Blacks and the Wallabies in 2021. Um, he is getting quite close to 27 years old, and that's when wingers tend to fall off, so I do think we are going to see Afalili Fasi finally make his debut. He's been well overdue for it. I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if he has got a cat, but if he hasn't, he deserves one, seriously. I cannot stop seeing the guy's videos. He's just full of talent. Yes, I do think it's the end of the line for Vili LaRue as well. Vili LaRue had quite a few dodgy games in 2021, so I think it's about time Damien Willemser becomes a regular starter for South Africa. He's been waiting in the wings for a very long time, and most importantly, he can come off that bench in jersey 22 or 23, cover both 10 and 15. That's why I think Jacques Nenaba is only going to select two specialist first fives. I do think Kerwin Bosch is finally ready for a recall as well. The guy's been so promising throughout his career, but now it's just getting to the stage where it's like, look, you gotta make the most of this guy. He is a once in a generation talent that you can't miss. So guys, that is the 33-man squad I'm predicting Jacques Nenaba, the South African head coach, to select for the Springboks in the 2023 Rugby World Cup. Um, it's going to be quite interesting now that World Cup squads are being expanded from 31 players to 33. If you guys are ever keen to support me financially, you can visit me on Patreon and uh, my PayPal tip jar. I also have an Instagram account, just hit 14,000 followers over on there. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to me so far and helped me to reach 2,000 here. Make sure to hit the notification bell after you join the subscription and like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment your feedback down below and I'll catch you later guys. Thanks very much.